Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial. Um, today's tutorial we're gonna go over how I paint the Slaves to Darkness armor which includes the black armor, the brass and gold iconography as well as the glowing runes. I hope you're gonna enjoy this tutorial, let's begin! For the palette of the black armor I'm using Abaddon Black, Dark Reaper, Rust Grey, and Fenerish and Grey. The brushes I'm using in this tutorial is the Redgrass game size 2 and size double zero. The first step I do is take in the Abaddon Black and mix it in with the Dark Reaper. I do this to soften the black a bit on areas where the light would hit from a zenithal perspective. You want to do this all around the model's armor. The first step in the edge highlighting is to take the pure Dark Reaper around all the edges. I also add a few scratches around the larger black surfaces to make them a bit more interesting. The second edge highlight is a mix of Rust Grey with Dark Reaper and do a thinner edge highlight on top of all the Dark Reaper highlights you've already done. The reason for doing the Dark Reaper layer in the first place is to soften the transition and support the highlights coming after. This is what gives the paint a greater quality. The third step is to do an edge highlight of pure rust grey. I start off by making sure I hit all of the bolts and nubbins. After this I go in and edge highlight most of the armor with mostly focusing on the crosses and corners. Focusing on these areas helps to emphasize the three-dimensionality of the model. After this is done, we mix the rust grey with fenerician grey, focusing on the corners again. Lastly, I do a selective highlight of pure Fenerician Grey on corners and crosses. For the gold, the palette is Warp Lock Bronze, Scale 75 Viking Gold, and scale 75 Alkima Citrina. Step one here is to coat the entire Chaos Icon with Warplock Bronze. 
Before we move on to the second step, I want to disclose the plan here, which is to keep the bronze color a bit darker around this cut here on the model's armor. And we'll make this a glowing green color, so that when something is glowing, it's good to keep the colors around it quite dark. The next step is to mix the Viking Gold with the Warp Block Bronze and apply a first highlight to the icon. I applied this quite generously, saving only a few dark spots. I try to focus on how the light would hit the icon's surface. The third step is to add more Viking Gold to the mix to bring out more light to it. I apply it in mostly the same spots as before, but saving a bit of the previous layer peeking through. Next we apply a layer of pure Viking Gold to the icon and now we're finally seeing the icon take shape. After we've reached the step of pure viking gold, it's time to apply a thin wash of Agrax Earthshade. This is done to matte down the surface and give it some more definition. This will also help to blend the colors a bit. After the wash is done and dry, I will move on to my small brush and apply some viking gold to the icon. I will do so to bring some spots back out. Once this is done, I mix in some citrina into the Viking Gold and start to highlight the icon. I do so all around the edges and also on some spots that would be hit by the most light. You can do this once or several layers like the black armor highlight, the principle is the same. The palette for the green glow is white and moot green, as well as any color that you used for your armor. The first step is to apply a watered down white into the cracks. You don't want to use thick white here. Even though the coverage would be better, it would be a struggle to get it in here smooth and avoid clogging the details. I do three layers of this white. After this I use some black from our previous palette to touch up the armor, making sure that the edges around the markings are clean and crisp. This will really help to make the markings come out nice and easy to recognize. If you skip this step it will show up. Now we can also clean up some spots of gold that has accidentally landed on the armor. Now I apply a layer of mood green through the airbrush. I use low PSI here to make sure I have good control over the pressure. I take my time with this step to make sure I push out minimal amount of paint and making sure that I know where I'm aiming the airbrush at. If you make any mistakes here it's going to be harder to clean it up later on. Thank you. 
Well, the green glow effect is already here and you can leave it right here if you want to. But if you're like me and want to make sure you keep full control over how far the glow spreads, you can mix some black with Lamia Medium and glaze over some of the green to clean it up a little bit. And that's it! I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I want to thank all of our patrons. Benjamin Winans, Carl Martin, Jason D. Fluffer, Jason Sellen, John Gammon, Jonathan Edlund, Joseph Larson, Mark Alexander, Mark Mitzman, Matt Rutowski, Mike Elkins, Seamus, Stormcrutch, and Warhammer OK. If you want to contribute to these tutorials so that we can continue to improve them, follow the link below to our Patreon page. Any support is very much appreciated. We love hearing from you, so share with us if you like the content, what you're working on, and if you have any wishes for future tutorials. I'm trying to read and respond to everyone, but if I miss your comment, it's very much unintentional. If you want to pick up some official Oscar Lars Painting Studio merchandise, follow the link to our shop where you will find dice, stickers, and eco-friendly screen printed shirts. Editing for this video was done by Martin Kramer. Palette and painting handle used is from Redgrass Games. You can purchase them and any other Redgrass products by going to oscarlars.com shop. When using any links there, Redgrass Games will automatically contribute a small percentage to these videos. The base and other painting handle are from Games Workshop. Thank you so much for watching, commenting, and liking this video. See you soon, and happy painting!